As President Biden contemplates running for re-election, questions about his future running mate and whether it will be Kamala Harris are growing. Harris is the first black and Asian American woman vice president, but on average, she has a low favorability rating at 39 percent, below Biden's average of 42 percent. And it comes as a Boston Globe op-ed points out that Harris has not stepped up enough on critical issues, but replacing her could result in Biden losing votes because Harris does poll well with women. So joining me now is CEO of the Global Situation Room and News Nation political contributor, Johanna Mosca. Uh, Johanna, thank you so much for being with us. Let's start with the obvious question here. Should President Biden keep VP Harris on the ticket if he does in fact run for reelection? Well, the problem for Joe Biden is that most Democrats behind closed doors say they don't want him to run. And so, you know, they know that the issue is his age. He's going to be 86 by the time he leaves office. And while Rupert Murdoch may think that's a good age to get married at, most Americans kind of question whether that's the age to be president. So, of course, then they start looking at if it's going to be Biden again, is it going to be Harris again? So FDR did change his vice president twice. So there is precedent for it, but it's a long time ago. And the issue that you talk about is exactly right, the optics of anything like that. I think that in order to do it, Vice President Harris would have to gladly say, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't want to be vice president anymore. And then he'd have to, of course, look around for a replacement. I, I don't think it's very likely. All right. So, so Johanna, you know, there's arguably been a lot of pile up when it comes to the VP, and that's actually from both Republicans and Democrats. Senator Warren, a Democrat, essentially said Biden should defer to what makes him comfortable on his team. Uh, so Harris is in many ways, you know, being made into this caricature. But is that fair when, you know, she is in a position that by design uh, keeps its inhabitant in the background, so to speak. It's a position which makes it difficult to develop a public persona, let alone change that public persona, correct? Yeah, it is. It's a position in which you're not supposed to be the president. I mean, Mike Pence writes about that in his book. He purposely didn't take a stand. And a lot of people were asking him to when Donald Trump was doing things that they disagreed with. So, you know, it's a it's a an unenviable position to be in as vice president. But some of the issues, you know, abortion access, for exa example, is an issue that's near and dear to her heart. So she could take that campaign on the road, talk about what we could do, go after different people. And so, you know, they are going to have to change their strategy at the very least if they keep her on the ticket. And she's going to need to start getting a little louder, getting out there and sitting with allies and surrounding herself by the people, um, maybe Mrs. Obama, <laughs> who are very popular with the Democratic Party. So, so Johanna, as you said, you know, right now there's no indication that he would even choose someone else. But let's just say that that he, he did or he would. Uh, how would he strike the balance he needs? Because how would he do that without potentially alienating himself from a chunk of his own party? Well, and that's that's the, the real tricky situation, because you don't know also who you're running against. We could be running against Trump. You could be running against DeSantis very unlikely, but I guess you could be running against a Sununu. Um, so you don't know who the, your opponent is going to be. And so really balancing out who you need to show up. I do think that Democrats need to get disaffected voters to trust in the party. So those disaffected part voters tend to be pretty progressive. Is that how we win the middle? Unlikely. So it's it's hard because, of course, you need someone who could step in to govern right. because he's going to be 86. Mark Kelly comes to mind because he could run for president. I think he'd be a fantastic candidate to run for president. But there's no way they would put Mark Kelly on the ticket with Joe Biden because right. the demographics aren't right. So, you know, then it's like, who could we run? Well, if we're going to be in the dreamland of replacing Kamala Harris, I guess we could run The Rock. And that would be very popular, but I don't think we're actually there. <laughs> Not so there I yet. think they're going to keep the bottle up. <laughs> All right, uh, Johanna, we don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to ask you this. Uh, we talked about his approval rating, uh, Biden's approval rating, according to this new AP poll, pro dipping to its near nearest, uh, its lowest ever, around 40 percent. He hasn't made any official announcement at this point. Do you think he's going to wait till those approval polls go back up, or is that not I even in the equation? I don't think so. I was thinking about this when all the Democratic folks last night were asking me, is he really going to run? He believes he should have another term. 
So I don't think that it has anything to do with polling or anything. I think he's trying to find the right balance to strike with, you know, everything that he's balancing with his legislative agenda he wants to get through and then announcing the run. So I, I think we're going to see it in April. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.